first assume that the planet is uniform density. Uniform density planet. Or it could even be a star. <coughs> so, so we want to know what the gravitational field would be if you're inside of that planet, a certain distance radius r. And then the radius of the planet is big R. Okay. So the, uh, once we calculate the gravitational field as a function of R, then we can know how much the person, any person, would weigh there by just determining um, their mass times the gravitational field. So our goal is to find g as a function of R, the gravitational field of distance R away. So what ends up happening is that. The gravitational field there only depends on the mass that is inside of the location of the person. So if you're over here and you drop a ball, and you want to know how fast would that ball accelerate down? You know, what would the gravitational field be? So then what matters is the mass that is inside of the sphere where you are located. And the mass outside of that, because it's all outside, it drags you in every direction, but the total force cancels out. So it, ma it doesn't matter how much mass is outside of you. Okay, so we're going to do G M prime over R squared, where M prime is the mass of how much is inside of you. Okay, so if the planet is uniform density, what that means is that the density function rho is constant. And the rho is defined as dm dv, the mass per unit volume. And if that's constant, right, what ends up happening? So then the dm is going to equal some constant, let's call it kappa dv. Then you're going to integrate that. So if I want to know how much is... Um, how much mass is just inside of this radius. So we're going to have the integral of m is m prime. So then that's going to equal kappa integral dv. And then so m prime is going to be kappa v prime. So in other words, whatever that constant value is, which is the density function, right? So m prime is going to be that constant times v prime. So then I, I can do another integral and say, well, what's the total mass of the uh, sphere? And then we have here dm is equal to kappa dv from 0 to big N, 0 to v. And you have m is equal to kappa v. So kappa is just equal to m over v. And then we can take that kappa, sub substitute it into here. And then we have here m over v times v prime. So essentially what we've proven is that when the uh, volume mass density is constant, then the amount of mass in here is equal to the ratio of the volume in here, right, to the total volume v, right, so it's the ratio of v prime to v times the mass of the whole thing. So that makes sense, right? So you just, uh, because the amount of density is not changing as a function of the radius. So you just take the mass of the, the volume of this divided by the volume of the whole thing. And then you would multiply that by the total mass of the whole thing. And that gives you the mass of just that portion. So then we can do here G over R squared. And then M prime, we can substitute it as V prime over V times N. And then we can now put the equation for the volume. G of R is equal to G over R squared. The volume that's inside of here is going to be 4 thirds pi R cubed to the ratio of the total volume of the sphere, which is 4 thirds pi big R cubed. Okay. And now you're going to cancel the 4 thirds pi then you're going to have here G M and R squared R cubed uh, it's going to cancel so we're just going to get R 
over r cubed. So this gives you the gravitational field inside of a uniformly dense planet or uniformly dense star. Okay? So what does that mean? If we plot g as a function of r, when r is equal to zero, the gravitational field is zero. So when you're right at the center of a planet like that, since there's nothing inside of you, you're right at the center, everything attracts you from all directions, and therefore you weigh nothing and the gravitational field is zero. Okay, and then as you go, as the R increases, the gravitational field increases linearly, right? Until you get to the radius of the, the planet. When little r is equal to big R, what's gonna happen? Gm over R cubed times big R, then you're gonna have Gm over R squared. Well, that one is the regular equation, right? The, mag uh, the gravitational field outside of the sphere is gm over r squared. So when you get to the ra uh, radius, that gives you the gravitational field uh, gm over r squared. So for the Earth, for example, <coughs> gm over r squared is 9.80, right? It's meters per second squared. So the gravitational field is... Uh, gm over r squared, and that's the 9.8, right? And then after that, what happens, once you go outside, the gravitational field drops as 1 over r squared, right? So then if you go to 2r, what's going to happen? What's going to be the gravitational field? Yeah. Well, once you're outside, when r is equal to uh, greater or same as r, the equation is what? gm over r squared. That one, you don't have to do it. So then uh, when you go with twice the radius, you square that, you're going to be one-fourth, right? So the gravitational field is going to be one-fourth of 9.8. So it's going to drop as a square function. So if this is 9.8, this is going to be 9.8 over 4, right? Which is 2.45. Uh, meters per second squared. So if a person over here weighs 200 pounds, over here they will weigh 200 over 4, which is 50 pounds. Right? So if you're at a location twice the distance away from the center of the Earth, you still weigh something. You're not weightless. You, are, you weigh 50 pounds. Right? If you go four times the distance from the center of the Earth, then it's going to be 9.8 over 4 squared, which is 16, right? So the gravity drops pretty rapidly. So that's going to be whatever that is. So if you, if you are 200 pounds, how much do you weigh there? Then you do 200 pounds over 16. Right, which would be 50 pounds over 4, right? Which would be how much? 12 and a half pounds? Yeah, 12 and a half pounds. So a 200 pound person weighs 12 and a half pounds once they are four times the radius from Earth, right? But now, what, if, what happens when we go inside the Earth? If we go to half the radius, okay? So then if you go half the radius, since it's linear, it's going to be half of G, right? Uh, essentially, you're putting here half R, right? So then you're going to have here G of R is equal to half R. And then you're going to have R, R is going to cancel, half GM over R squared, okay? And then GM over R squared is a 9.8. So that's going to be 4.9. So 4.9. So linearly increasing function means if you go halfway into the radius of the Earth, the G drops half. Right? And if you go one third, G drops one third. 9.8 over 3. If you go one fourth, G drops 
9.8 over 4. And then your weight drops like likewise too. So if you weigh 200 pounds here, you weigh 100 pounds here, you weigh 50 pounds there, and so on. Is it right? one to one? Huh? It's a one to one ratio, yeah. Okay, now what happens at non uniform density planet? Most planets and stars will be non uniform and the more dense material will sink to the bottom. Okay, so the moon is like that, uh, Earth is like that, where the iron core of the Earth sinks to the bottom, and then you got the less dense material that starts accumulating on top of that planet, right? So in most cases then, the density of the function will be start out high, and it will decrease as you go. So then that one we need to integrate. So if you're a certain distance r, and this is big R, right? So we can say rho sub r is non-uniform. So it could be an increasing function of r or decreasing function. But most planets will be decreasing function because the more dense material will be on the inside. So we can make up any function we want. Rho sub r is, uh, we can say, uh, kappa, a, uh, kappa e to the minus r. Let's say it's exponentially decreasing. Okay. So what does that mean? Uh, when r is 0, it's kappa e to the 0, which is just kappa. And then rho sub r is equal to big R, kappa e to the minus big R. Right, so it's a, that means the density starts with some number here, and then it decreases right, exponentially as you go farther and farther away until you get to some number. Okay. 4 pi k, then you put in the big R now, and then you put in 0, and you got, I guess you could get the same thing. And then now you can eliminate the 4 pi k. 4 pi k is m over this whole thing. And then you then substitute that into that for pi k. So now you get here. What does that mean? If we put little r is equal to zero, what do we get? M prime little r is equal to zero. So that will tell us how much mass there is right at the center. Right? Question on why did you plug in the numbers trying to solve for the thing? Yeah, because I want to know the ratio of given any little r, I want to know the ratio of the mass included in here to the total mass of the sphere. And so that's my ultimate goal. When it was uniform, the ratio was a simple ratio of the volumes. The volume of this to the total volume. But when it's non-uniform, it's some weird ratio. Yeah. Okay, so then you're going to have what here? Uh, you put r equal to 0, you get 0, 0, right? Notice what happens. 0, 0, negative 2 e to the 0, which is negative 2 plus 2. 
perfect. That makes sense. If you're at the center, there should be nothing in, inside it. No matter what the function density function is, right? If we choose any kind of density function, in this case it was a e to the minus r, right? So then that's equal to zero. And if you put little r is equal to big R, well, by now you're at the surface of the planet, and the mass included inside of you should be the total mass. So you put big R here, big R here, big R here. Well, then that's going to cancel with the ball at the bottom, and that's going to give you M. Okay. Okay. So it's, it seems like it makes sense. So now we can calculate the G just by taking G M prime over R squared. technique that we are uh, employing